Interesting thing with the Maple Leafs, too, and you focus on a lot of the kids, and we did the game on Saturday, the, the final preseason game for the Maple Leafs. They lose 4-3 to three to the Detroit Red Wings, and the one player who made something happen every single time he was on the ice, with all due respect to Austin Matthews, was the one that you're talking about, sort of by uh, by implication there, someone we're not sure whether he's going to play the whole season. Will he play 9? Will he do 39? Will he go to the juniors? Will he go back to the London Knights? And that's Mitch Marner. And every time we watch him play, he does something that makes you believe that this guy should be here, earn that spot, and may just be here longer than people expect. Well, And the other part is this was the one that Mark Hunter, who was really valued in the organization and, and is really respected as a judge of talent, whether it's junior or NHL, whatever. I mean, that's the one he put his, not so his reputation, but basically that was his decision. Noah Hannafin or Mitch Barner. The other ones, it, it, there was not as much of a debate. I mean, I don't remember Nylander, that kind of, Cut and dry debate with somebody else. Certainly, Austin Matthews was fate accompli going first overall. So I think that also adds to the cachet of him making it. And hey, say one for the little guy. Everything's done. Everything's done in junior. Can he do it at the NHL level? Let's find out. He's certainly showing. I know it's preseason. He's certainly showing that he can. Well, in exhibition season, he's done nothing to not say that he doesn't belong in this team. I mean, he's been exciting every time he touched the puck. I mean, I forget which game it was. Maybe it was against Ottawa. He went back three or four times to break out uh, out of his own zone by himself, saying basically, defenseman, hang on, let me come get it and let me try to create something out of it. And every time he did it, uh, he, it was an offensive opportunity. And this guy's an exciting player. And again, the biggest thing was, is he big enough? Is his physical stature enough to hang up to the rigors of the NHL? He's going to get pushed. He's going to get punished a little bit. But that's why you have this, this time frame, to see what he can do. But right now, the skill set, his speed, everything that he brings to the Toronto Maple Leafs, Leaf fans everywhere got to be excited having this guy on the opening day roster. Greeted on the back check yesterday, or on Saturday, two-on-one, Andreas Athanasiou oh, yeah. and Anthony Mantha. And he legs it back and almost breaks it up single-handedly. The interesting thing to me about Mitch Marner and the comparisons to Pat Kane are out there. To me, he's closer to a Paul Correa type, and that's kind of what I see there. And the way that he creates separation from other players isn't with his speed, right? He's not Athanasiu. He's not Dylan Larkin. He's not Connor McDavid. But the way that he cuts mm -hmm. to get away and to create that separation, create that space, open up the gap, wait that little extra half second, see the ice, see the play before him, and then makes it. I mean, and you talked about it on Saturday. Yeah. His edge work, yeah. right? We always think of skating as, oh, he's a good skater because he's fast. No, no, no. You can be a great skater by having great edge work, and that's Mitch Marner. Well, and he's got the edge work, but he's also got the hockey sense. I mean, looking, he goes and he'll go down the wing and he'll do tight turns and button hooks, but he, and he's got unbelievable vision that he sees guys that are coming uh, secondary and third waves, and he's good, and that just makes guys around him better. So he's going to create opportunities for himself, but because of his skill set and because of what he can do visually and seeing the ice, he's going to make guys around him that much better. Is that, it sounds weird when you talk about being fast and quick. But yeah. there is a bit of a difference, yep. right? And and he is he totally. is both and smart. Yeah. So you so you put them all together that way. The one down comparable could be say a Jonathan Druin. Doesn't mean Jonathan Druin's not going to pan out. Jonathan Druin just has been a slow developer compared to the other guys that he was picked around. And again, just it's more the the size part that way. But I but hey, if all he does keep going out and proving he can do it and do it and do it, and especially not on a good team, because sometimes when you're on a uh, good team, mm -hmm. your first round pick comes in and plays with way better players. And I like what he's been able to do with, let's face it, a pretty pretty ordinary lineup that finished 30th last year.